Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a clean install of Ubuntu 1304. Now, to perform a clean install on Ubuntu, you're going to have to either have a live disk made, it'll be a live DVD, or a live USB drive and the ability to boot from that drive. And with most computers, especially the newer ones today, if you hit F12 as it's booting, as you get to the uh, boot up screen, the very first screen when you turn it on, you should be able to hit F12 and select what drive you want to be able to boot from. If not, then you're going to have to go into your BIOS settings and configure your BIOS to boot from the DVD drive or USB drive first. Once you're able to do that, you should be able to start from that drive or that disk and be able to start the install. Most of the Ubuntu disks are live disks, which means it's going to boot into the operating system first in most cases. I'll show you how this is done and taken care of. As you can see right here, now it pops up the first screen, which is you can either try out Ubuntu or install it. If you want to try it out first, go ahead and feel free to click that. You can still install it afterwards, but we're doing this one for a clean install. So you want to click on the install Ubuntu button. And select download updates while installing. And install third party software, which will install your MP3 plugins audio codecs, video codecs, different things like that. Click continue. I'm going to click something else here instead of erase entire disk. Click continue. In most cases if you've already got Windows or something like that installed you'll see that you have Windows on there and you might have to shrink the partition table down and different things like that this one's a clean drive so we're going to click new partition table continue and then you see how it says free space right here we're going to click add this little plus button right here is to add a partition And we're going to need at least a 4 gig swap file. If you plan on using hibernation or anything like that, <clears throat> you want to go about one and a half times to two times the size of the RAM. If you're going to use uh, hibernation and different things like that, then yeah, you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to run about double double size. But if you're not going to use hibernate or sleep sleep mode on a computer then you can just make the swap file the exact same size so I'm gonna make the swap file the exact same size as the amount of RAM this thing has 4 gig which I believe is 4096 megabytes I'm gonna subtract that from the 257707 so 257707 minus oh it's just 25770 So we're going to go minus 4096 equals 21674. And that's what I need to put in for the primary partition size will be 21674. And we're going to set the mount point to slash, which is root. Click OK. It should leave us with a 4 gig partition left over. It did not. So I'm going to have to change that. So we'll remove it. I'm going to go add. We're going to try 21673. Set the mount point to slash, which is root again. And now I have my 4 gig swap file. So we're going to click on that free space right there at the bottom. Click add. And right here where it says use as, select that and hit swap area and click OK. And at this point, the hard drive is now configured for <clears throat> a Ubuntu install. 
by setting the mount point at slash and not mounting any other separate folder that pretty well dynamically allocates the hard drive to where it can expand whatever area it needs to as much as it needs to for the different files and stuff for installed programs your own home folder all that good stuff and then we can just now hit install now make sure you select that hard drive right there the one that you set to mount point to the forward slash and then hit install now now it's going to go to your time zone I'm in a central time zone uh, Chicago works I'm just going to hit continue then it's going to go to your keyboard layout and your language layout and it'll just be English US on both click continue and then you're going to want to put in your name and it'll create the computer name on its own as well as your username and then pick out a password make sure you remember the password If you want to encrypt your home folder where no one else can really look at it and increase your own personal file security, you can select that option right there. I do it sometimes on my own systems, especially on my laptops and stuff where I'll be actually taking it with me to different places. But for the most part, I just leave it require my password to log in and click continue. And once it's all done, it'll say installation complete. You need to restart your computer, and at that point, it'll be ready to boot, reboot right then. Once it reboots, I need to take that drive out, and whenever your computer reboots, you'll want to pop the disk out or disconnect the disk so it doesn't try to boot from it again. Okay, now you're ready for your first time login. Oops. Once you get logged in, you'll be looking at the Unity bar. You have officially installed Linux on a clean install. And you're ready to rock and roll, start installing software, play around with the operating system, and pretty well doing whatever you want. This information is out there for absolutely everybody. And as always, watch, like, and share. Have a great day.